All right, welcome to our 14th episode of Tac Talk. I am your host, Alden Morris. Last week, we had a few interesting developments when it came to the initiatives here in Washington State regarding gun control legislation. Uh, we had, starting from about Wednesday or Thursday of last week, uh, we had a, a plethora of sheriffs come out and announce their opposition to Initiative 1639 publicly, meaning that they will not have their, their uh, deputies enforce the law. Uh, and they are refusing to acknowledge the law, which is, is, is groundbreaking for the citizens of the state of Washington because legislation is passed by majority vote. The majority vote then becomes law. Somewhere along the line, see people in the state seem to have forgotten that we don't live in a democracy. We live in a republic. That we are not ruled by mob rule. That we are about the individual's rights. We are a republic. So, again, uh, I'm going to name off a list of counties that have come out what we're considering called red counties, uh, that they're in opposition of Initiative 16 to 39, and then we have counties that have not come out or have not made an announcement. Like my county, for example, I, I belong to Pierce County, and uh, the Pierce County Sheriff has not come out at all, from what I've understood, and has stated his, uh, whether he's for the bill or against the bill. So, And it's likely that Pierce County were very liberal-leaning, because we are just south of King County, so it's likely that we are going to end up being liberal leaning, uh, just like Thurston County, who is just uh, southwest of us. So uh, we have Ferry County, Stevens County, Spokane County, Adams County, Franklin County, Benin, Benton, Grant, Kittatus, Yakima, Klickitat, uh, Cowlitz, Wachium, Pacific, and Grace Harbor Counties are all in opposition of Initiative, initiative 1639. Uh, they are refusing to enforce Initiative 1639. It looks like... We're still missing, what, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15-ish uh, counties that have yet to announce their uh, their side of this legislation. However, Mason County, Thurston County, Clark County, King County, Chelan County, and Walla Walla County have all come out and said that they are in support of Initiative 639. And we can't expect much from King County because those progressive liberals think they know what's better for everyone. So, <clears throat> moving on. And I will leave links to the social media prod the broadcast uh, to these uh, links that I'm uh, sharing with you guys, as well as for the YouTube channel. Uh, this was a live on Friday uh, by Cram 2 News, uh, live of Spokane County Sherry Ozov Kenovich, uh, regarding questions of Initiative 1639, uh, and he stated that they were unconstitutional on the state and federal level. Now, I'm not going to play the whole video for you, it's about 26 minutes long, however... Uh, we'll play clips uh, that I don't have pre-organized, but here we can uh, hear them. Before we start, um, I figured I would uh, see if any of you wanted to talk with me since everybody did stories yesterday that nobody really talked to me about except for the spokesman. <laughs> um, and to clear up some of uh, the things that are hanging in your minds as far as uh, those stories. So with that in mind, uh, I don't have a opening soliloquy on this this one all right so i'm yeah. just gonna so i will leave the link for this this is uh again sheriff ozzy kenovich again some funny sound coming from there moving on uh this is sheriff ozzy kenovich uh speaking on behalf of initiative 16, 1639 reconfirming that he will not enforce it because there's nothing to enforce the 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 legislation does not give the police and law enforcement any type of new tools to work with when it comes to apprehending season seizing and uh i guess taking guns off the streets they don't, this legislation does not do anything that gives them any additional authority or power to take action this only re-solidifies the the contempt that they're already in which is nothing they have to wait till a crime is done until uh they can take action and start to intervene when it comes to apprehension and weaponry especially for criminals who weren't supposed to have them in the first place. I mean, these laws are already in place. I mean, if you're a criminal, there's a law that states you're not allowed to possess a firearm. When you go, as a criminal, possess that firearm, well, it's Initiative 1639 didn't even need to be there because it didn't help law enforcement prevent you from getting your hands on that firearm. All it did was legislate against the law-abiding, make it harder for them to get a firearm, but yet the criminals still have just as an easier chance, and it's already law, that they cannot have a legal possession of firearms. So... Again, I'm going to leave this link there as well. Uh, it's about 26 minutes and 56, 56 seconds long. So do watch that if you can. I'm going to play another clip here from the Krim 2. Uh, this is one of their, uh, this is again, Sheriff Kenovich. Um, 
and I hope I'm saying that right. It In looks... other news, the Spokane County Sheriff ahead, says listen. he believes Washington's new gun law is unconstitutional, but he's stopping short of saying he won't enforce it. Voters approved Initiative 1639 in November, which, among other things, raises the minimum age to buy a semi-automatic rifle to 21. Several Washington sheriffs say they told their department they will not enforce it. In a Facebook post, Sheriff Ozzie Knezovich said those sheriffs are, quote, grandstanding. He says there's nothing written in 1639 that actually gives law enforcement a crime to stop or pursue someone for. Still, he says he believes the law is unconstitutional. We all took an oath, folks. Uphold the Constitution of the United States and the laws thereof. Uphold the Constitution of the state of Washington and the laws thereof. This law violates both the Constitution of the United States and the state of Washington. Read the state of Con uh, Washington's Constitution. It is very, very definitive. You do not mess with the people of this state's ability to own weapons or use them. Sheriffs from Lewis, Republic, Chelan... Now, I am going to interject there. I will continue playing this uh, brief news piece. Um, but for the second segment of this show, I will be pulling out a uh, Washington State Constitution and reading some of the first few uh, articles in it. Uh, so that way, I keep one in my car. They're about five bucks at the local library. If you happen to go to an event, uh, like a Rally for Your Right event at the state capitol, you can get them for almost free or next to nothing down there as well. They hand them out like candy. They want you to be informed. Most of your politicians and your legislators do not want you to know your rights because that way they can manipulate certain bills, like pass them in the middle of the night when on a Friday when everyone else is at a football game or something. So... Uh, get a state constitution. Like I said, they're only five bucks. They're real easy reads. I mean, they're designed to be written for pretty much a third grader. And, um, yeah, I will be reading some of that in the next segment. So I do, uh, give com accommodations to Sherry Ozzie Kezovich. I believe I'm saying that right. I'm not sure on it. The fact that he's actually standing up for what he took as an oath. And Benton, Adams, and Grays Harbor counties have all said they will not enforce the initiative. The NRA and the Second Amendment Foundation filed a joint lawsuit challenging the initiative. Washington Attorney General Bob Ferguson responded, saying voters made their opinion clear when they approved the initiative in November. Okay, and again, Bob Ferguson does not speak for the state of Washington. Bob Ferguson is our highest law enforcement authority in the state of Washington. However, he does not seem to be in touch with the tune of the people. I mean, he says that the people spoke, but again, he's also a Democrat who paid for illegal aliens to come into our state and get voters rights and he did some very corruptive things with jay Inslee, our state governor in order to get not only his position in the in the house uh or in the in the in office but uh but to make these kind of bills and legislation pass now he says that the people voted uh but to me it looks like the people didn't vote when the majority of the state's residents who voted for that bill live in one county and that was king county i'm seeing here uh the state with more than half of the counties painted red because they don't agree with what King County voted in. Now, you can't tell us that the voters voted when when you're, you're only using, you're using vague information in major metropolitan areas, even lies. I mean, this this bill was a feel-good bill. It's, I mean, reading it briefly made it sound like, oh, well, if I pass this, enhance background checks. That makes sense. Oh, well, yeah, voted in, yes. But when you realize there's already background checks and that enhanced background check just means nothing and that you're still going through a mandatory waiting process for a firearm, even if you have a CWP or don't, and now you're raising, raising the age of children, you know, from 18 to 21 to buy a firearm. However, yet you can still join the military at 18 and be issued your own rifle, 17, 18 years old, overseas to kill other people. So it's just getting ridiculous. Now, on the second segment when we get back, because we're going over our time a little bit here, this is going to be a long episode. Um, we have a lot of information regarding not just Initiative 1639 and its developments from last week and how the state sheriffs are coming out and refusing to acknowledge it or uh, enforce it, but we have also had Bob Ferguson and his cronies uh, pass some late night bills last minute on the House floor. So I'm going to get those read. They regard high capacity magazine bills as well as the sale of semi-automatic bills. These bills cover the sale, distribution, trade, manufacture, and destruction of semi-automatic rifles. Uh, they basically start a registry and they uh, prohibit the sale and ban all sales uh, in and out of state here in Washington State. So when we get back on the second segment, I'll be bringing that up as well as some parts from the state constitution. Uh, we'll be right back after these messages from our sponsors. Thanks.
Bees Combat Systems at BeesCombatSystems.com. Protecting those who prepare. 801-987-0893. Percussive body armor carriers and tactical gear for military, law enforcement, contractors, corporate security, responsible citizens, and border patrol. Bees Combat Systems at BeesCombatSystems.com. 801-987-0893. All right, thanks for joining us We're on our second segment of our 14th episode of Tac Talk here. Is it episode 14? That's correct. I'm your host, Alden Morris. Uh, so I did say in the first segment that I was going to go out to my vehicle and get the state constitution for Washington State. However, it turns out I lost my keys in the snow last night, so uh, change of plans. I'll be out in the front yard raking the snow looking for my keys now. So when you mix alcohol and fun <laughs> so however i did pull up the state washington the washington state constitution here on the internet and uh, i'm just going to read just the first about five sections here in article one it says uh the preamble is we the people of the state of washington grateful to the supreme ruler of the universe of our liberties do ordain this constitution article one declaration of rights section one political power all political power is inherent in the people and governments derive their power their just powers from the consent of the governed and are established to protect and maintain individual rights Section 2, Supreme Law of the Land. The Constitution of the United States is the supreme law of the land. Now, remember, Washington State was, was a federally founded state, and they still recognize that the Constitution is still the supreme law of the land. First, section 3, Personal Rights. No person shall be deprived of life, liberty, or property without due process of law. And that's where we start to kind of interfere with Initiative 1639, why these sheriffs are actually coming out and saying that they refuse to enforce Initiative 1639. Because under under provisions of 1639, for example, uh, they have uh, written into there that if you are suspected of any type of mental instability, that they can seize your firearm rights. And here you can see for personal rights under Section 3 of our state constitution, no person shall be deprived of life, liberty, or property without due process of law. And that means you're being, you're being deprived of both your liberty and your property without due process of law if you're only suspected of not having a mental stability uh, when it comes to firearm, firearm ownership. Section 4, right of the petition and assemblage. The right of the petition of the people proceed peaceably to assemble for the common good shall never be abridged. And number 5, freedom of speech. Every person may freely speak, write, and publish on all subjects, being responsible for the abuse of that right. So... Uh, just to kind of read the titles off moving further, uh, O's mode of administrating invasion of private affairs or home perimeted. So for example, section seven states, no person shall be disturbed in the private, his or her private affairs or his or her home invaded without authority of law. Uh, irrevocable privileges, franchise immunity prohibited, uh, rights of per accused persons. No person shall be compelled in any criminal case to give evidence against himself or to be twice put in jeopardy for the same offense. And then administration of justice goes on, goes in there. And then, of course, the amendments of like, you know, 34 from, you know, the amendment of 1957, 1904, and those kind of things will go on to religious freedoms, things like that, which, again, are just covered under the Constitution of the United States of America. So when these sheriffs come out and they state things like, well, Initiative 1639 does not give us any extra tools to work with in order to seize or apprehend firearms. Of course, they're right, because they cannot deprive anybody of their life, liberty or property without process of due law. And all this initiative does is try to curtail uh, the the due process of this country. I mean, you are innocent until proven guilty. However, if we suspect you of you might do something, thought crime, future crime, whatever, uh, scientific bullshit you want to come up with, uh, with no substance of logic, uh, then you start invading on people's personal rights. And again, we're not a democracy. Just because Bob Ferguson and his cronies, Jay Inslee and Habib, Lieutenant Governor Habib, uh, say that, well, the majority of the people voted. No, the majority of people who voted live in one county, and those people in that county are all lied to so consistently that they don't know uh, positive legislation from a negative legislation. All they know is a feel-good law because they run off emotions, not feelings, because they're liberal progressives. I mean, it may, it may sound nice to have a socialistic country in which everyone makes a minimum income and there's no poor people on the street, but then you lose the whole point is what this country is about, and that is the the, uh, the pursuit of happiness, the, the drive to keep someone. I mean, it's your, your right to be homeless. It's also your right to work hard and earn a good income. It's the whole point of this country. So moving on, last week we had further developments, not just with Initiative 69, but we had developments with, again, Bob Ferguson, 
our Governor Jay Inslee and our Lieutenant Governor Habib, the the trio, the the, stu the three stooges over here. Uh, one likes to do one, well. For example, my problem with Lieutenant Governor Habib is he's blind. So already being in office, we have to cater to him even more so because I mean, think about the man hours that could be saved, the taxpayer dollars that could be saved, hiring less aides to have to read to Habib his bills. You know, whether he's reading on Braille or he's having an aide read it to him. It's still someone who's not capable of doing the job of the office. Um, especially now that he's being recognized for someone who's a traitor to the state, traitor to this country, won't show up to his job. I mean, his job is to be in the Olympia capital during certain speeches. When he, shows, when he doesn't show up because, again, no life threats were made against him, but he won't show up to places because someone might have a concealed weapon. Well, that's your right to have a concealed weapon. I mean, he is guarded by armed security. So, like, is he not showing up because his own? I mean, who's to say that his own armed security won't turn and kill him? So, that's let's question that, Habib. Let's hope you're listening. Let's get you on the show and see if you want to, you know, debate this out. Anyways, moving on. Firearm magazine ban and firearm seizure ban are bills passed committee. During the executive session of Fe on February 1st, the Washington State House Committee on Civil Rights and Judiciary voted to pass House Bill 1068. To ban many standard capacity ammunition magazines and House Bill 1225 for firearm seizures without due process. These, due process. these two bills will now go to the House floor for further consideration. House Bill 1068, sponsored by Representative Javier Valdez, was filed at the request of Attorney General Bob Ferguson and passed by a vote of 9-6. to 6. It would ban the possession of ammunition magazines with a capacity greater than 15 rounds. Now, here's another thing that bothers me. Let me finish this real quick. Compassing the standard capacity magazines for magazine hand, for many handguns and rifle rifles commonly owned by law-abiding citizens for self-defense. Now, before I interject on the House Bill 1225, House Bill 1068, that's bullshit. I mean, my, my Glock 17 Gen 4 came with three magazines all at a capacity of 17. What this bill does is makes my stock magazines that I purchased from the manufacturer of Glock illegal. I mean, I've got, I've had 75 round drums, I've had 150 round drums, I've had around drums, I've had 40 round magazines from my AK-47. Not a single one of them makes a difference when it comes to the pull and the, the, the action of my firearms. <clears throat> I mean, it just makes it so I don't have to reload as frequently. But I'll tell you right now, I can have 10, 10 round magazines and I'll still put 100 rounds down range in the same amount that if I had one 100 round magazine. I mean, if you if you want to ban high capacity magazines, we'll just train how to load faster. Like so, knock it off. Like so, this is getting ridiculous. House Bill 1225, sponsored by Representative Lori Jenkins, would require law enforcement to seize firearms and ammunition when they are called to the scene of an alleged domestic event violence incident, and hold them for at least five business days. This would result in property being confiscated without first going through due process and subject citizens to bureaucratic red tape to get their property returned. House Bill 1739, sponsored by Representative Valdez, was also filed at the request of Attorney General Ferguson. It would end the centuries-old practice of manufacturing firearms for personal use and also contains provisions that go above and beyond federal law that already bans undetectable firearms. This is regarding the 3D printed firearms. The committee rescheduled the vote for HB 1739 to next week. Again, the state constitution also says that the supreme law of the land is a country's constitution, but this goes above federal law. So again, here's Washington liberal progressives with our Attorney General Bob Ferguson, our Governor Jay Inslee, and our Lieutenant Governor Habib, all thinking that they can, they can be almighty powerful. So, back in the day, we used to hang politicians for less. So let's be on our toes, get contact your county sheriffs, ask them if they oppose or if they're for initiative 1639. Get on the floor. I mean, the last time we had a rally for your rights gathered on a Friday at the state capitol here in Olympia, um, Lieutenant Governor Habib actually locked out the people. I mean, your taxpayer dollars pay for that building to operate. Your taxpayer dollars pay for those legislators to sit there and to pass bills according to how you vote to your senators for it, your representatives. Now, when you show up because they're going to vote on something you don't agree with and you show up to show them you don't agree with and they lock you out... Are those people working for you, or are they working against you? The action, this time, this call to actions are already going to have to happen. So this is ridiculous. I mean, if you want to make certain things illegal, I guess I'll become a criminal. I mean, I'd hate to say it, but I'm not going to turn in my magazines. It's not going to happen. And I'm very open. If you can check out my YouTube channel, you'll see exactly what I have. I don't hide my inventory. So there's just, just some of the developments that are happening here in the state. And because, again with what's going on out of King County and Thurston County, those two counties really make up the population for this state because you have Olympia and you have Seattle. 
However, when it comes to, you know, Yakima County and uh, Franklin and Adams and Ferry and Stevens and all these different other counties, the populace is not as high because these are the eastern counties of the state of Washington, so, or southern counties of the state of Washington. It's just, it's just getting ridiculous. Uh, so, <clears throat> the, the amount of influential political power that two counties hold in for this entire state needs to stop. So, we're going to end the show there. We're, uh, I got to get in the front yard and I got to take a rake to the snow and I got to look for my keys. So, wish me luck and we will be back on the show tomorrow with developments on these house bills and these, uh, uh, these anti-constitutional gun-grabbing legislation. So, thanks for listening to Attack Talk. This is the season episode, or season two, episode 14. I'm your host, Alden Morris. We'll see you guys tomorrow. Thank you.